The Holy Gospel is according to Matthew, the 21st chapter. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with them. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the Son of David. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We praise you and thank you, O God, for the great acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. On this day he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was acclaimed Son of David and King of Kings by those who scattered their garments and branches of palm in his path. We ask that you bless these palm crosses and those who bear them, and grant that we may ever hail him as our Lord and King, and follow him with perfect confidence through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first hymn is all glory, laud, and honor. The lyrics are in front of you, and we will go ahead and process him. <laughs> Thank you. 
I didn't hide my face from insults and spitting. The Lord God will help me, therefore I haven't been insulted. Therefore I set my face like flint and knew I wouldn't be ashamed. The one who will declare me innocent is near. Who will argue with me? Let's stand up together. Who will bring judgment against me? Let him approach me. Look, the Lord God will help me. Who will condemn me? The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. The second lesson is from the second chapter of Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and he became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Branch 
was a symbol of triumph and victory. So for Roman officials who are in Jerusalem and are witnesses to this joyful welcome Jesus is receiving from the people, this would raise major warning flags. It looks like someone was making a play to be the new king of the people. And that would not end up well for Jesus. So, this is the joy of Palm Sunday. Jesus finally arrives in Jerusalem, the Prince of Peace, the writer of wrongs. But what is at the beginning of our gospel, the scene of delight, quickly turns into a scene of sadness. The same people who cheer Jesus will soon boo him. One of Jesus' own disciples betrays him. In fact, all of his disciples, in a way, betrayed him to leave him alone and alone. The Roman government and the enemies of Jesus finally get their chance to arrest him. And the good vibrations of Jesus arriving are replaced with the impending doom of where Jesus ends up. As we read this passion, I want you to think. Think of the times you have felt joy only to be replaced with sadness almost immediately. Now for some of you, that might bring up some very painful memories. And for that, I'm very sorry. It's going to do the same to me. If you do think of a moment, I ask you these questions. Where did God show up in your moment of sadness? How did God show up? What did God do? Who did God work through to help you in your moment of sorrow? And think about that as we hear and read our gospel this morning. The Holy Gospel is according to Matthew, the 27th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus was brought before the governor. The governor said, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, That's what you say. But he didn't answer when the chief priests and elders accused him. Then Pilate said, Don't you hear the testimony they bring against you? But he didn't answer, not even a single word. So the governor was greatly amazed. It was customary during the festival for the governor to release to the crowd one prisoner, whomever they might choose. At that time, there was a well-known prisoner named Jesus Barabbas. When the crowd had come together, Pilate asked him, Whom would you like me to release to you? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called Christ? He knew that the leaders of the people had handed him over because of jealousy. While he was serving as judge, his wife sent this message to him. Leave that righteous man alone. I've suffered much today in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and kill Jesus. The governor said, which of the two do you want me to release to you? They replied. Pilate said, Then what should I do with Jesus who is called Christ? And they all said, But he said, Why? What wrong has he done? They shouted even louder. Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere and that a riot was starting. So he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I'm innocent of this man's blood, he said. It's your problem. All the people replied, Let his blood be on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus whipped, then handed him over to be crucified. The governor's soldiers took Jesus into the governor's house, and they gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a red military coat on him. They twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. 
they put a stick in his right hand. Then they bowed down in front of him and mocked him, saying, Hey, king of the Jews, after they spit on him, they took the stick and struck his head again and again. When they finished mocking him, they stripped him of the military coat and put his own clothes back on him. They led him away to crucify him. As they were going out, they found Simon, a man from Serene. They forced him to carry his cross. When they came to a place called Golgotha, which means skull place, they gave Jesus wine mixed with vinegar to drink. But after tasting it, he didn't want to drink it. After they crucified him, they divided up his clothes among them by drawing lots. They sat there, guarding him. They placed above his head a charge against him. It read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. They crucified with him two outlaws, one on his right side and one on his left. Those who were walking by insulted Jesus, shaking their heads and saying, so you are going to destroy the temple, and you will live in three days. Save yourself, if you are Lord God's Son, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the legal experts and the elders, were making fun of him, saying, He saved others, but he can't save himself. He's the king of Israel, so let him come down from the cross now. Then we'll believe him. He trusts in God, so let God deliver him now if he wants to. He said, I am God's son. The outlaws who were crucified with him insulted him in the same way. From noon until three in the afternoon, the whole earth was dark. At about three, Jesus cried out with a loud shout, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you left me? After hearing him, some standing there said, One of them ran over, took a sponge full of vinegar, and put it on a pole. He offered it to Jesus to drink, but the rest of them said, Again, Jesus cried out with a loud shout, and then he died. Look, the curtain of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks split, and the bodies of many holy people who had died were raised. After Jesus' resurrection, they came out of their graves and went into the holy city, where they appeared to many people. When the centurion and those with them who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and what had just happened, they were filled with awe and said, this was certainly God's Son. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. And so we have come to the end of the Passion Gospel. And if you had a chance to think of a moment in your life when joy turned into sadness, I hope you were also able to answer where God showed up to be with you in your time of grief and misery. As Christians, we tend to focus on when God is with us in the good times. We thank God for those moments. But as Christians, we also believe in a God who does not only show up in the good times, but a God who shows up in the bad times, the sad times. And that is why God is a good God. God provides in times of joy and in times of sadness. God provides himself, which is what the passion is all about. This moment might be sad, but it is also a moment of hidden joy, because the passion is all about God's passion for us. Everything that Jesus does, he does it for us. It is God's action, God's love, God's mercy that is on display in this gospel. Look at the branch, the palm cross in your hand. And this week, take this cross home with you. 
place it in an area where you can see it every day. The kitchen, the living room, somewhere you can look and be reminded of what it means to be a Christian. And what it means is to have a king who always loves us through the good and the bad. Amen. for me, and so I call to you, then you appear, so I bless you. Your heart was cold, so jealous was I of you, you had me and I just felt you. Close your ears so I can slay for you. You shut your eyes so I fed you. You thought that I was patient to wait for you. You yelled and cried while I clothed you. For you. You were not my people, but I called you my own. And you, you had been so hateful, I brought you to my home. You know, I was dead. And so I sang for you, your people down, I untied you. You could not speak, and so I taught you to. You were so scared, but I didn't need you. For you, you were not my people. But I called you my own. I knew you had been so hateful. I brought you to do my own. For you, your own hand shed my blood, and I had made you mine. And you, the children uncovered, now you are my child. You spit on me, even as I kiss you. You shut my face while I bathe you. You raised my poor. My spirit all over you, you crucified, and I let you. For you, you were not my people, but I called you my own. I knew you had been so hateful. I brought you to my home. And you, your own can shed my blood, and I have made you mine. And you, military and uncovered, and you are my child.
now stand and join with all God's people in confessing our faith. I believe in God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, son of the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended into heaven. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you, see you. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. On this holy day, O oh God, we remember that final week of Jesus' life as he was welcomed into Jerusalem with shouts of Hosanna in the highest, only to be replaced later with shouts of crucify and crucify. We pray this week you'll give us a greater depth of understanding for the sacrifice that Jesus made in order to become our Lord and Savior. May the story of Jesus' love and suffering for us so affect us that we will eagerly give anything to be his disciples. Show us the way to the cross and the trust to follow him through death to resurrection glory. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for a world gathered in prayer on this holy week and ask that the occasion of our prayers together will be a uniting of our spirits with all people of faith who follow you. So we pray for our Roman Catholic and Eastern Orthodox brothers and sisters in faith, for those coming out of the Protestant traditions and the independent spirit-led churches. Through this holy week for all Christians, may we find unity and common mission and purpose and wisdom to find common witness to Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for those today who are struggling with faith and doubt, those whose lives lack purpose and meaning, those who are caught up in the grip of loneliness, those who feel like failures, those who have lost their way, those who are sick, those who are so weary of all that divides us one from another. May your life and death, Lord Jesus, be our way back home to you. For all are welcome, and all are safe, and all are loved. Glory in your mercy. Amen. You remember those who ask for your healing touch, and who we lift up now in our prayers. We pray for Gary, Carolyn, Judy, Lynn, Pam, Alan, Francis, Larry, Ann, Debbie, Mary Lou, Toy, Renata, George, Melinda, Kitty, David, Wayne, and Cindy. Bob, Sylvia, Anna, Sarah, Curtis, and Faye, Bishop Tim. We also pray for all those continuing to suffer through the recent severe storms. Lord, in your mercy. In your hands, Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy for your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now I invite you to please rise as you're able for the blessing of bread and wine. Today we are going to see the verses of Let Us Break Bread together, along with the words of the institution which I will do. <laughs> saying, Take it, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
Now I'd like to please rise as you are able. We now bless the communion care packages that are going to be sent to our hometown and sick. Gracious God, loving all your family with a mother's tender care, as you sent the angel to feed Elijah with heavenly bread, assist those who set forth to share your word and sacrament with those who are sick or homebound. In your love and care, nourish and strengthen those who will receive this sacrament and give us all the comfort of your abiding presence through the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray. 
Compassionate God, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. Sustain us in our Lenten pilgrimage. May our fasting be hunger for justice, our alms a making of peace, and our prayer the song of grateful hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us go ahead and pray for the breakfast we are about to eat together. Dear God, we thank you so much for the opportunity to have fellowship and food, and we ask you to bless our time, bless the food that is uh, we serve and share, and bless the ones who have made it for us this morning. Thank you, Lord, for blessing this congregation with so much, and let us live out that blessing each and every day. In your son's name we pray. Amen. And now as you leave, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. His peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.